Well, welcome to Preston Table Tennis Club. We've been kindly supported to do this video by the owners of this place, which is Carter and Newman College. Uh, so we sincerely thank them for their kind donation. It's been quite a while since um, we did our last coaching session and I've been constantly asked to do another one. So uh, out of retirement, let's say, uh, here we are today. So what we're gonna do on a further ones that we've already done in the past years, we're gonna have a look at the forehand drive. Now, if you talk to a lot of coaches about forehand drives, there'll be various opinions as how this should be performed. Bear in mind, that opinion from a coach will be valid, but it will be aimed at the person he's talking to, and that person could be a different level than what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the understanding of a forehand drive from a basic beginner level, so that when they progress up in standard, they will know exactly what they're looking for before they even play it. So that's the introduction, so, but what have we got? Two people to help me today. We've got young Bethany Ellis, who's 10 years of age, and currently England number one under 10 ranked player, and currently the England under 10 national champion. And we've got a brother, Toby Ellis, who's 11 years of age, and he's under 13 ranked number eight in England. And um, I'm sure there must be something else that these two uh, talented youngsters have achieved. Have I missed anything? Um, we're both Lancashire County champions. You're both Lancashire County champions at the same time in the same season. Yeah. Well, I think that's pretty commendable. <laughs> well done to both of you. So let's, let's look at now the actual technical part of what we're actually talking about. Okay, Toby, if you'd like to go over there and get in a position, and Beth will go in a position. So we've said, various people have various ideas. <clears throat> I have mine. And I've been coaching an awful long time and I won't change those ideas. Irrespective of how the game has progressed over the years. The game's got faster because people are technically better and the game's got faster because the technical stuff that you're playing with is infinitely better than it was many, many years ago. So the first thing to remember is that when I talk about forehand drives, there's two things that's built into this. One is to get in your stance into the position which automatically puts the bat in position and that means to say that when we start to commence the stroke, the bat can only go one way, which is up from the bottom of the bat level with the table, up into the ball to contact and complete the shot by carry on going up until it goes towards your opponent's head. Two things will happen to that. One, the bat can only go one way, as I've said, and it will put automatically top spin on the ball so there's no need to try to do any wrist actions or elbow actions. I'm not looking for that at this stage. What I'm looking for is a nice, easy contact, and I'll just demonstrate it slowly without hitting the ball. So if I'm looking at my opponent, and the ball then suddenly switches to my forehand, doing it in a slow motion action, and I'm sure on video it will be even slower. I move into position to play the stroke, taking my right shoulder down, which will bring the bottom of my bat down and it should be round about the level of the table. Something like that. Now from that position, I'm waiting now for the ball to come. All I will do is rotate my shoulder back to where it come from, my upper body back to where it come from to look for the ball, to commence the contact on the ball and then I will be overbalancing if I don't do something else. So as soon as I hit the ball, I need to move my left foot forward to take my balance, which then takes all the weight through the ball and the ball will progress over the table. Let's do it again. I'm in position, I play the stroke, the ball comes, I follow the tracking of the ball, the position of the ball with my shoulder. The bat is in my eyesight of my back foot. I take my back foot back into position the bat goes with it, all in one motion. Not two, three, no. Everything is simple, it's smooth. We move, we pause, and we play. One of the things that, one of the things that we can put in your mind to make sure that you've got this action right, it's in your practices rather than playing the game, is think about the three P's, that's called the letter P. What does it mean? It means one, position. 
When the ball is coming, we're going to hit a forehand drive, do we? How do we know? We've picked the line of the ball up from our opponent. It's coming wide of our side. We can play a forehand drive to this, so we need to move into position to get ready to play that ball. Hence, we move in position and I'm ready to play the ball. If you move position correctly, and I'll come to a most important point in a minute, you will find that if you do not take your bat further back from your back foot, you will be in a position to pause, waiting for that ball to come to your side. Not every time, but I would suggest that at least 80 to 90% of the time you play a forehands, if you get position all in one movement into position, you will be paused before you play the shot. So we've got the three P's. We've got position, pause, and then we play. Three separate actions in your mind when you're doing your practices. Go over it and over it again and again and again, and you will come second nature when you're on the table to play those shots. You will look at videos of very, very top players. And this is a danger that young people, like we've got Bethany and Toby, they will go home and they will look at the world champion and they will look at the European champion and they will be playing forehand slightly different than what I'm talking about. Why? Because they're the best in the world and they can. And at that level, they will need something else other than what I'm talking about today. They will need to bring the elbow in which will drop that bat angle away from the 90 degrees that we want and they will drop the wrist at the same time because they need more spin on the ball. They have to have those two elements of coming in at that level. We are not talking about that level. We are talking about understanding what happens to a stroke on a top spin drive so that it will build in. And we've had criticisms before when we've talked about videos. We've had criticisms when people saying, if that chap served like that to me, I would kill him. He completely missed the point of where we're at. All our videos that Preston Table Tennis Club has done is about young people started on the path and started to play the game reasonably correct, getting it correct, so they understand completely what's happening to the game. The rest will follow later on. I mentioned 90 degrees there. 90 degrees in the arm, as you move in position, your bat arm stays in 90 degrees. I don't want that elbow moving, and I don't want that wrist moving. It's all one movement, shoulder down, in position, pause, up we play the stroke, and away goes the ball. The most important thing is when you move the bat in position, the bat does not go back further than your back foot. There are times when it will. You will do anything you possibly can to get the ball on the table. And the reason for that is because we might underestimate the speed of the ball because if it's hit faster or it's spun from the opponent, which in terms will give us more speed. We have to adapt to that. And the times are that we might have to adjust our back position. One thing you need to think about is that if you take your bat in position like I would like it to be, the bat stays over the back foot you will be waiting for that ball to come. If you then continue taking the bat back once the ball is in position, and with an awful lot of players, you will see an awful lot of players do that. They're doing something now that they shouldn't have done, and they're now going to have to do something that they shouldn't do before they can actually do something that they should do. Because that is where it should be. That's where some people take it, and then they have to come all the way back into position from there, and then carry on to hit the ball, and then carry on to complete the ball. Why do we need to waste all this time and energy? Because it means to say that you're rushing the stroke, and the stroke becomes a one action. The stroke is not a one action. The stroke is a three point action, the three P's. Position, pause, play. One thing I failed to mention, if that bat is in position there, and the ball comes from my opponent's side, and I have underestimated the speed, and it's faster, and I haven't got time to complete what I want to do, I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is just keep the bat where it is, just bring it up slightly with my body, and the ball will hit my bat. And all I need to do is just nudge it back. 
if you can think about those three things, we have a chance of being more, 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 uh, more consistent and effective with the stroke we're playing. What I don't want you to do in practice is to think that you've got to knock the ball, pass your opponent every time you hit the ball. Otherwise, it's pointless. One has, a, has to act as a feeder, and the other one has to act as a player. You get your chances, and we'll bring these two young players on in a moment when I've demonstrated the stroke. So what I'm going to do now is ask Toby to feed me, and I'm asking him to put the ball halfway between my forehand side, so I don't play no more, and I don't move very fast now. So we'll just try and emphasise the back foot going back as the ball comes. So as long as it's there, the bat's got to go lower and it's got to come up. That's better. One thing to look at is if my bat's in position, no faster than that, it's great stuff that. If my bat's in position, I'm waiting to go, right angles, throw me up shoulder through the ball. If you look at the contact, it should be round about my left shoulder. It may be in front and it may be slightly behind, but in the main, that's what you should be looking for. A couple more. Sometimes when you're in a position and you're waiting for the ball and you get the rally going nicely, unless you're hitting the ball flat out like that, the chances are you don't need to move your left foot forward. But if you want the maximum power with the 90 degrees angle, you need to get that left foot going through the ball, which throws your body weight through the ball and it gives it more weight behind it. Now this time, <clears throat> what I'll ask Toby to do is play three drives and then hit the ball to my bat. And if my bat's in position, when you're ready, Toby, I should be able to make contact with this ball. Whether I return it or not, with skill and practice, I will be able to do. Hopefully, I'll be able to achieve what I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying to achieve, right? And then suddenly, from a slow ball that I use as a block, it may well be that I could bring the opponent in just a touch so I could put it away. And I get one right and it goes way past him. Okay, so we know what we're doing, yes? Track the ball with your right foot and the back at the same time, right? Good position, wait for the ball, and then drive the ball to the top of his head. Away we go. Now that's looking pretty good. We've got a good balance there, a beautiful posture. Bring it back a bit lower, bring the back from a bit lower, from a bit lower. That's not bad, don't worry about that. Everybody's entitled to make mistakes. The shoulders are well in front of the waist. The right shoulder is releasing through the ball. The bat is going in a straight angle from the 90 degrees bat arm. So I would suggest that if we carry on doing that sort of thing in practices, right, the practice session could increase in speed. The stroke will actually create um, more consistency. And the right foot could actually move back a little bit if Toby just increases the pace of the ball in the practice. Not until it, you have to do it, uh, Bethany. Right? That's pretty nice that and the bat is staying right over the back foot. She's got plenty of time to play the stroke. It's nice and compact, it's tight. Nice movement. I'm happy with the back position. It's over the back foot. I'm happy with the right angle back arm position. I'm happy with the plane of the stroke. The back could come from a little bit of a lower position, but I'm getting, I'm nitpicking now. That's perfect. Keep it going that way, keep it going up slightly. That's absolutely beautiful. The plane on the stroke is superb. Right, well that was absolutely great that Bethany, right? You've got the principles right there. Keep on working on that. So we should be on the right track. So what we'll do now is if Beth, if you, Bethany, if you go to that side and Toby, if you come around here, and let's have a look at Toby now, see whether he's got the principles of this stroke. Here we go. So keep it nice and steady. Let me have a look at the right angles. That's perfect. 
right? The bat's starting maybe just a touch behind his heel, but I'm not too, worried, too, too much to be worried about. Lean forward a little bit more, Toby. Now, that Toby, you're absolutely square. We need to get that left foot slightly forward, right? We need to get that left foot slightly forward. That's perfect. Now then, that right shoulder's coming through square with the left. I'm happy. Uh, the angle is right angles. The bat's going up through the ball. It's giving it nice top spin without actually giving it any top spin whatsoever. That's brilliantly. Now, if you find at your level that that's too near or too far, right, you adjust it yourself. But what we don't want is going too far, do we? And there's two ways we can get it too far. Stay in where you are and let your back go too far. Or stay in your back where it is and let your body go back too far. Either one of those two we don't want. However, we go. So it's three feeders and one drive. One, two, three, and there we go. One, two, three, let it go. Nice and steady. Right. Well, Toby, I was really pleased with that. That's, uh, that's a, a good example of what we're going to, where we were at and where we need to go to. Bethany, excellent control there. And in your practice on this side of the table, demonstrates to me that you're getting the idea of where we're about. So let's, let's recap the whole session now and let's conclude. Right, so what we can do then is just briefly run through the basic things that we're talking about. You see the ball coming for your opponent and the ball is now going to switch to a forehand side and we know that we can play a forehand drive to that ball. The first thing we have to do is move into the position and we have to get the bat following the back foot at the same time, all in one smooth movement. Once the bat is in its position, it will be stationary at that position. And then the ball comes into line, it comes into range and we just transfer the shoulder back so it goes square to the table, the bat goes up through the ball, imparting top spin on the ball without even trying to put any spin on it. The bat's aiming for the head of the opponent and the ball completes the cycle. What should happen then is that we shall actually go back to control position and then move yet again. But in the exercises we've been doing, we know that the ball is going from point to point, so there is really no real reason to move from one place to the other. We've achieved the three Ps. Let's remind ourselves what the three Ps are. We see the ball, so we need to go to position. That's one. In position, we need to make sure we have enough time to play the shot. That's why we pause. That won't happen all the time. But it will if the movement is quickly and it's smooth. If you labour the movement, you won't have time to pause. If you're quick on your movement, you will be paused. So that's the second P. And then all we have to do is the third one, which is play the stroke. Right angles of the bat arm. Don't use your wrist, don't use your elbow. Keep your body in lovely position like we showed before on the, on the films with the shoulders being in front of the waist. All we have to do is transfer the upper body back towards the opponent with the back coming up through the ball and finishing face on to the opponent's head. That basically is all we're trying to achieve with this video. As I said right at the beginning, you'll talk to loads of coaches around the country who've got all the charges They've got all the charges and they'll all be talking about the forehand drive. And the people that they're talking to will all be different levels of competence. And the forehand drive will be different, only marginally, because in what we're talking about, the basics will be there. But the certain differences will be according to the standard of the player that they're talking to. Let's reassure everybody that you'll enjoy this video if you remember where it's aimed at. It's aimed at people that's only just starting this game and need to know exactly what to do to a certain ball. This is one of the most technical points of the game. And this is why coaches are so enthusiastic to develop people to play forehand top spins. And one coach's different opinion will be another's. We have ours and I'm sure by keeping into it, you'll be successful. So thank you for watching it and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. that I could bring the opponent in just a touch so I could put it away. Like so, no, don't, don't edit that. I mean, edit that. Don't put that on. <laughs> that was total, excuse my word, crap. Okay, demonstration. Four. Four. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let him get back. Yeah. Loud, loud. Forehand demonstration four.
You didn't need to say it loud, I just wanted to do that. <laughs>